Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Last video I showed you guys how to use grid power. Today I'm going to show you how to get RF power up and running. It is a bit more difficult. The way I'm going to use is using lava from the nether. Doing it this way makes it so you almost never run out of RF power, which is very convenient. And the only thing you'll have to worry about is maybe running out of lava in the nether which, as crazy as it sounds, will happen. You'll just have to move the generator a little bit farther in. So, without further ado, let's get into it. To get started, here's some of the items you're gonna need. This is not something you're gonna get in the beginning of the game. Like I said, by the time you're getting the RF power, you are a little bit further in. Some of the main things you will need are a redstone engine, in this case, I have four of them. You will need levers as well to operate them. You will need an ender tank, at least two of them. You will need a way to get into the nether. That should be obvious. So you will need a nether portal, as well as access to the bottom levels, or at least a pool of lava that is decently deep. The other thing you'll need is a pump. So far we haven't gotten to anything too hard yet. Most of these things you can click into when you're crafting as long as you look up like I said pump, enter tank, or redstone engine. You can see all of these things inside of the thing and it will tell you how to make them. The hardened fluid duct will be a little bit harder. You can't use a base fluid duct, like if I click into here. A base fluid duct uses copper and glass. You can't use this because if you hold shift you'll see that will break if contents are extremely hot or cold, which means you need a hardened one. Contents may be of any temperature. The problem with this is that you need invar, and most likely you don't have RF power already. In that case, you don't have some of the ways you need to do this. One of the easiest way to do it is using the alloy smelter. Since we don't have this, you probably don't have RF power, or if you are, you can use coal to operate these. That is possible, so you could have a small one going, in which case you need nickel and you need iron. Putting these two together will give you an invar ingot, which would be plenty. You don't need too many. I would say you probably need two sets, so about 12. Now, as you can see, if you can make two invert ingots, you can make six. So you need at least four to make 12. The last item you most likely need is a chunk loader. So this one is a little bit more difficult. So you need an eye of redstone, not the hard part. You will need a contract and a golden lasso. And the reason you want a chunk loader is if you're not in the nether often, your chunk is gonna unload and you will stop receiving lava in the overworld. What a pain. You still need to reload the chunk loader every now and then by going and checking it out. But generally, if you have the chunk loader there, it almost always works. Now, back to the contract. If we right click on the contract on a villager, so if I go over here and I click on a villager with the contract and you read here, you see that he will be talking. You will see a literal contract, but the thing is right here. Yes, wait, I mean the other one, no. So he is not willing to sign this contract. If you finally find someone, it will actually have a spot to sign. So if I click sign, he will now be ready. I can capture him with a golden lasso. Bring it back to your chest. And you're going to put that right in the middle. Now you have a chunk loader. With these items in mind, I said four redstone engines and levers. You need one lever per engine, as well as the pump, an ender tank to put the lava, the hardened fluid duct to move the lava into the ender tank, and lastly a chunk loader. Now I'll meet you guys in the nether and I'll show you like the ideal situation to set it up in. 
Ideally, you're going to want something like this. So this thing is literally sucking the lava out and moving into the overworld. So at some point, the lava will actually go down because you are moving buckets of lava. So you want a nice big pool like this. You're going to move down. Don't do that. Okay, fly. What you want to do is get down to the base level. So in this case, I'm just going to build myself out a little bit. In your case, find something that works for you. And then just build out a couple. And what you're going to do is build up. And you're going to put the pump on the outside of this. And you can see the pump is green. Now put your engines on the sides. And generally I put the last one on the top. Grab your levers and turn them on. This is something you're going to have to be a little careful with. Four levels is generally more than enough in everything I've seen. From this, grab your hardened fluid duct and take it out like this. And you're going to put it straight into a redstone or an, ed an ender tank. Grab your chunk loader, put it right there. It does take eight grid power. So if you don't have the grid power from the last one, this will not work. This is why I generally recommend you also put a chunk loader on your grid power. In my Let's Play series, you'll see that I definitely did that because I actually fell to my death at least once because grid power randomly just stopped. It may look like lava is not flowing, but then you'll see some more come through. So don't worry about it. As long as you see lava in the tank, then it is working. Let's go back to the overworld and let's get this set up. Okay, once you are back in the overworld, we're going to do something similar. You're going to grab your under tank and put it down. You'll see that it instantly fills with lava. That's because it's already connected to the one in the nether. And we're going to put a couple of these down. You may need to change the outgoing. So there's a red and a blue. If you flip the symbol, there we go. The next item you're going to need is a magmatic generator. So this will take magma and it will turn it into RF. These are the items you're going to need. Some gold, some redstone, and a furnace generator. So this one gets a little bit more difficult. To start with, you'll need machine blocks. Here's the recipe. Using that machine block, you're going to make the next one, which is the furnace generator. Here is also that recipe. Using that one, you will make this. Now you have a magmatic generator. If we take this and just pop it right in front of it, you'll see it instantly turns on. It fills with lava. And over here, you will see that we have 10,000 of the 100,000 RF building up pretty quick. Now that you have the RF power being created and it's all operational, you can just put any machine. So I grabbed a sag mill. If you look at this and I look over here on the left, you'll see that it is already collecting power. So this is going down, but everything around it is going up considerably fast. So you can have one, two, three, you can have up to four connected to this. The other option is to try some kind of energizer or battery kind of situation. And you can do an off put, an off put, and an off put. And the battery will actually store the power so that way you can have up to, you know, 100,000, 100,000, and 100,000. And then you can have up to 12 machines off of this one generator. Obviously, it is not the most efficient. If you put something in here, say I actually tried to use the signal, it would start draining this very fast, meaning the machine would work very fast. But obviously, this is going to get drained. That is just something to consider. But hey, you now have RF power. It is that easy. Like I said, other than the fact that you need to get into the nether and set it up rf power isn't that scary the next machines suck 
so good luck with that. It's not so much that they're difficult, that every machine that we use this RF is very technical and it is very time consuming. So you just need lots of stuff with it, so it takes a while. Probably we'll get into it. We for sure will get into it in the Let's Play, so make sure to check that out. Join the channel, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see next. We're going through lots of tutorials. If you want to see them in action, check that Let's Play. Have a great day.